Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. I am so very excited to come out here and share with you another beautiful, amazing knife from Herman Knives. And uh, this one I have to give a special thank you to Graham for sending this out to me. And I believe he just changed his Instagram handle. I'll look it up and then I'll put it on the screen down here below. Um, used to be Instagram ham. And I believe he just recently changed it. This is a very, very special edition. Um, shipping with this, you get the zippered case from PolishCustomKnives.com, as well as Herman's original beautiful wooden presentation box. This is the Ovium, not the Ovum, the Ovium. And this particular variation is a full dress. And while I've owned a few Hermans, and I feel very, very fortunate to have been, um, as far as I know, the first person to come out here on YouTube and extol the virtues of Herman's work and share with you guys this amazing maker, because I got extremely lucky and uh, fell into getting to know uh, Herman and PolishCustomKnives.com and being able to collaborate with them and get some really, really cool stuff out here for you guys to enjoy. And Herman is actually making, or was at one time making for me, a Dragonfly model in Timascus and Damasteel. And uh, I haven't received it yet. I don't know if he's done with it or if he's still working on it or what's going on with that particular knife. But um, I have been excited for such a long time for that. Because while I have loved each of the Herman knives that I've owned, I have always chosen to go with more of an EDC variation. Uh, finishes and materials that were better suited for everyday carry. Where you didn't feel like it was a crime to get a scratch on it. And they've been enjoyed in that manner, being able to carry them play with them, flip them, feel the action over and over and over again, use them, cut things with them. And this one, even though I know Graham does like to enjoy all of the knives that he owns, this one really is more of a showpiece and one that you're, you're more inclined to take special care of and not really carry a whole bunch of times. So sometimes I make that choice consciously, even though I know that someone is extremely gifted at working with high-end materials such as Timascus, which is going to, you know, it's going to need a really, really good polish. And the heat coloring is tricky to nail the colors that you want to get before you start getting into the point where you've actually singed the material with the blowtorch and you're not pulling color any longer. Uh, Herman is just fantastic with his blowtorch and every detail on his knife is done to perfection the fitment i mean there is your blade centering there the material choices the material finishes i mean he's just so incredibly talented and i've had the wonderful opportunity to sample a, a few makers from Poland that were just mind-blowing. I'm just going to move my studio light here a little bit so that we can keep constant light on this very, very polished blade. Now, I myself am not a big fan of Damascus blades that aren't etched to show the pattern and con the contrast in the pattern. And what, what he's done here is it's obviously been etched because you can feel the topography of the blade. You can feel the pattern in this raindrop style Damascus. And it's definitely stainless Damascus. I believe it is most likely Damasteel. However, uh, I'm not entirely certain. What I do need to do is show you what else comes with this knife, and that's going to give me the missing information that I need to. And that is right here, the Certificate of Authenticity that will arrive. And it's not just with Herman Knives. Anything that you're purchasing from PolishCustomKnives.com, they are 
wonderful with their packaging. You'll always get a nice zippered case. If the maker has specialized packaging that they offer as well, you'll get that too. And all, any tools and extra spare parts, whatever happens uh, from the maker, you'll get. But they also do these nice uh, hologram certified certificate of authenticity. It's very, very classy. They're uh, reversed, they're embossed, really, really nicely done. They're handwritten. Very classy way of uh, presenting the product and representing each of the makers that they represent. And it says that it's uh, Baalbach Rose Damascus. Now, I know that uh, Damasteel has a pattern called Rose, but it's not the same type pattern that we're seeing here. So I'm going to assume this Damascus is a stainless Damascus as well. Oh, that action. My goodness gracious. Woo. So uh, in the packaging, you receive the knife. You also receive a specialized tool that allows you to make pivot adjustments because you have a custom proprietary pivot on all of his knives. So you will have this specialized tool that will allow you to make those adjustments. Uh, it is a captive pivot from the back side here, so only this side will turn. I am not going to use the tool on this polished pivot because it ain't my knife, and I don't really want to put scratches all over it. I'm just going to move the packaging way over there out of the way and lay this beauty down. Uh, there's also... It gives you a standard Torx bit as well. So if you already have a driver at home, you can simply use that Torx bit in your driver, which was very thoughtful of him to do. Now, overall, this represents a lot of what Herman Knives is known for. Organic flowing designs, sleek look, unbelievably sharp blade, beautiful grinds, incredible machining on the frames. This millwork is absolutely beautiful. And it's funny because normally on Timascus or Mokutai, I would prefer to have it smooth and polished and not have these uh, milled ridges in there. And I believe even when we were discussing uh, my custom dragonfly order. I may have actually asked if it could be, uh, if it could not be milled. Just because in pictures, it looks really, really distracting. But I'll tell you right now, in real life, because this is the first time I've handled a milled Timascus knife that he has made, it's not distracting at all. As a matter of fact, it has a wonderful effect with the light, the way that it dances through all of those grooves, I actually really, really dig it. So forgive my ignorance on that because you're, you know what? The customer is not always right. And the way that he's chosen to do these is definitely the right way to do it. They look amazing. It feels really good too. Has a nice uh, ribbed for her pleasure kind of feel going on. Pocket clip is simple. Nothing too ornate. Backspacer is also Timascus, beautifully done. His blade stock is pretty thin. Oh, that feels so, so nice. And because it's so thin, it's very easy to get that blade to just come flying out. It's about 126 thou thick. So it's not crazy thin, not, not precariously thin where it feels dainty or delicate, but it's thin enough to come down to a ridiculous, ridiculous sharpness on a full flat grind and has nice harmonics as it opens and closes. This is a liner lock instead of being a frame lock, so do keep that in mind. That way you've got the beauty of the same Timascus on the lock side as you do on the presentation side. 
Now, the Ovium, as, as I'm looking around on uh, Polish Custom Knives' website, it appears that the standard base versions can go as low as $750 for the base price. And this dress piece, a similar one that they had just recently sold, this one was already off their site, uh, was around $2,000. So, as to be expected on a full, custom, unbelievable quality, incredible craftsmanship and finish work in full tie Damascus and stainless Damascus, it's around two grand, and that's not out of line at all. Pretty much everybody that is at this level would be charging this much or considerably more. You've got ceramic for the detent which gives you a nice crisp feel and also very smooth against the, uh, the blade as it's opening and as it's closing. His actions are beautiful. They're not guillotined like when I drop this. It doesn't just drop on its own and you got to hope to get your finger out of the way. But it's extraordinarily smooth and you just give it a little, just a little shaky, shaky, shaky and it drops right into place. And that means he's got the perfect lock tension for the detent up against the blade and it's dialed in perfectly at the pivot everything feels perfect normally i don't go for this all polished look on damascus but i will say this and i and i have to uh credit graham again for letting me borrow this and being so patient uh, because i've had this i had this a few weeks before uh my Unfortunate medical issues struck me down a couple of weeks ago. So I've had this for a while and he's been super, super patient. So I've had a chance to play with this for a while, a while longer than I would normally have a guest blade to play with. And the finish has kind of grown on me. I really, I really like it. And I never thought I would say that. I will say this, in pictures, I still don't like the look of any Damascus that is merely polished that doesn't have a visual contrast. I don't like it. But in person, it feels different. It takes on a different light. And I'm sorry, I really, really, really do like this. I do want to concentrate on some other key areas here. Another signature uh, of Herman is, is uh, instead of using big, ugly, gaudy, hardware on the show side of his knives. So this is kind of the business side. So you've got hardware holding the clip in, hardware for the backspacer and holding the frames together. And then the backside of the pivot, which is actually pretty dressy, not very business-like. And then this is the show side. This is the presentation. This is the beauty side. And that is such an elegant touch. And he does that on so many of his knives. And I think that that's one of the things that I truly love about what he's done in his, not only his design aesthetic, but in his execution, because they're so perfectly done. But the, the round, the round and pin look is very, very classy and has been around forever in fixed blade knife making. And I really like how that's brought forward into the art that is his folding knives. So with all that said, this may not be a traditional review of mine. I'm not doing pros and cons. I'm not doing all that. Uh, I do want to give you the specs very quickly. Essentially, a, a review like this is basically telling you how impressive the knife at this price range really is. And if, if you're just getting into knife collecting and you've never spent anywhere near this much, it may be hard for you to justify spending $2,000 on a knife like this. But when you've got something this special and you have this amount of work that goes into it, all of this, the, the polishing, which probably took, you know, 30, 40, 50 hours just in the finish work on this knife. You're buying into that amount of that life maker's knife, or I'm sorry, that knife maker's life. I don't know why my tongue couldn't get that out. You know, when you're buying a manufactured product, let's say you're buying a production knife, you're buying something that comes out of a machine. At some point, some human hands are probably involved with doing something, but it's it's a very quick process because obviously they're making, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands on an assembly line. 
Whereas this is one knife maker dedicating a portion of his life to making this knife, to assembling it by hand. No matter how much machinery is involved in that, because everybody has some sort of machines, no matter how much of a handmade knife maker you are, I'm a handmade knife maker, but I still have drill presses and grinders and band saws and things like that. You're going to have machines because doing it all by hand, while that is the craftsman way to do it, <laughs> man, uh, you would never make a living like that because it would take forever. You've got to have something that uh, allows you a little bit of that freedom. Anyway, you're buying into the experience that he's got. You're buying into the very painstaking detail of all of the finishes, all of the cleaning up after milling all of these lines, getting in there and polishing every one of those milled lines, mirror polishing that pivot, mirror polishing this blade, very carefully heat coloring the Timascus and pulling out what I feel are the most beautiful colors when used in, in, in Timascus and Mokutai just looks fantastic. You're buying into the hours, days, and weeks that that man did not spend with his family, did not spend with his children, did not, you know, do things around the house to, to make the wife happy. All these things that go into your work. When you think about your work, when you go to work, you're thinking, man, I got to drive an hour a day commute or I'm stuck in an office for eight hours a day, I would much rather be spending time with my new bride or my, my new baby or we just got a new puppy. Whatever it is that you think to yourself, man, I wish I earned more, no matter how much you make, I wish I earned more for all the time that's wasted in my life having to work, to work for the man. Well, as, as someone who owns his own business and takes an extraordinary amount of pride in his craftsmanship and not just turning out a good knife, but taking the additional time to never rush and make everything as perfect as possible, you're buying into a portion of that man's life. At some point, he can look back and go, yep, um, I spent all of, uh, all of November making this knife and maybe the matching one that, that I made alongside it. A lot of times knife makers will remember specific knives that they made and they'll remember a period of time in which they had made it. A lot of times they'll remember the time they spent with that knife, working on it, building it. Maybe they remember the time they spent designing it. That's where the money goes. It's not just raw materials. And this knife has very expensive raw materials. I mean, the billet that this Damascus came from, was. this is probably a good $300 worth of steel just in the raw material in billet form. No cutting of it, no polishing, no grinding, nothing. Just that raw piece of steel was probably somewhere around $300. The Timascus you've got, I'd say, probably a good $500 worth of Timascus here. Again, raw material with no work done to it. The machine time sitting down and milling all of these grooves. Then all of the grinding, then all of the handwork, all of the time that that man put his expertise on the bench and crafted this. That's what you're paying for at that level. So I'm sorry I went off on such a tangent there, but I know that every now and then I do get a new viewer that comes across my videos and they truly cannot understand why somebody would spend so much money on a knife. That's why. I'd spend, I wouldn't spend that on a knife. I'd, I'd spend that on a gun. Well, at that price range, you're also buying mostly into a custom gun. You're buying like a Wilson Combat or something. And why are you buying a Wilson or an Ed Brown over a Springfield Armory out of the box? Because you want that extra degree of perfection to it. You want that hand-fitted slide. You want that, that hand-tuned by a 
master gunsmith that has years of reputation and experience to draw from, tuning your sear to get the perfect trigger. So it's a lot along the same lines. Now, if we're talking about like five, six, seven hundred dollar knife, people don't get, I'd rather buy a gun for that. Hey, you're buying something that's off an assembly line that was thrown together by half skilled labor and luckily makes it out the door functioning. And the brand's reputation is what usually gives you the quality firearm or not. There is no comparison there. So yes, it is expensive, but you're buying into a piece of art. You're buying into somebody's time and energy and part of their life. And in this case, buying some really expensive materials too. Now, can it still be used as a knife or is it merely just a piece of jewelry? With the edges that he puts on his blades, absolutely can be used. Very quickly, let's do the specs. I apologize, that tangent was far, far, far too long. Overall length of 8.94 inches, blade length of 3.9 inches, one of his larger models, and the handle length of 5.04 inches. Everything that you see that's colored is Timascus, the frame the backspacer, and the pocket clip. Inside, you've got ceramic ball bearings for the uh, bearings that are also on polished, hardened washers that also allows for, his, allows for his gliding smooth action. And it, it's, it increases the longevity as well. You don't have these ceramic bearings carving into the softer Timascus, which again, Timascus is a Damascus, a layered Damascus of titanium. That's what it is, For again, for people that are fairly new. You've got a carbonized lock face on that titanium lock and the custom pivot in titanium with a matching titanium tool. Weight is 4.3 ounces. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys because I've spent far too long on this review. Um, it's very easy to see that I am in love with this knife. I'm going, to, I'm going to cry a little bit when I have to package it back up and ship it back to Graham. Graham, thank you, dude, for being so incredibly patient with me and allowing me to have this in my home for as long as I have. Normally, when I do a guest blade, I have the knife for a few days, maybe a week, two weeks max because it takes me time to photograph and then uh, do the video. But this was just a little bit different and not didn't get one single message. Dude, you almost done video on my knife. I need it back. I need it back. I need it back. Nothing. Super awesome. I really appreciate it. I'll get this out in the mail to you tomorrow. And for the rest of you guys, I'll see you on the next video.